Hello everyone, this is Pierre, your ChemDraw Wizard, and in this video we will go over the chemistry capabilities of the Notebook 2014, that is how to easily record and write down your experimental chemical data, how to reuse already existing information by duplicating or creating templates, how to search for chemical reactions, and once everything is finished, how to produce a report of all those experiments. And that is quite a lot, so let's get started and have a look at what a chemical reaction may look like in the Notebook 2014. The most important part of the experiment is the reaction section, which contains a ChemDraw document, as you may recognize it. And alongside we have several tables to write down experimental conditions, such as solvent, temperature, reaction time, and below we have a stoichiometry table that gets automatically populated based on the molecules drawn above it. You can register different samples that you have created with their associated purities and physical chemical properties, and you can also directly send them to our inventory software solution from this page. As you do so, a clickable barcode link will be inserted in the samples table. Finally, the experimental procedure below is a text field possessing a powerful auto text functionality that allows you to write down the experimental procedure based on information entered in other fields. So it is a dynamic feature, that is to say that if I change the solvent and the volume of the reaction, that change is automatically reflected in the procedure. The chemical intelligence in the notebook allows you to link reactions together, which means that you can have an overview of the synthetic history of a given molecule by visualizing its synthetic path as shown here, where you can see that the molecule we were looking at is the final molecule in this multi-step synthesis that involves some of my experiments, as well as a molecule synthesized by one of my colleagues. And I can actually have a look at that synthetic history as well. I can double click on the experiment title, which will take me to the notebook of my colleague, where I can check the experimental procedure. And I could also review the publication from which he got the procedure to start with. And since he prepared and registered a certain amount of this compound, I can actually have a look at what is still left by clicking on the barcode that will open a web browser window and take me to the inventory location where that container is stored. That is, in his lab, on his bench, and there are still 2.8 grams left of it. Experiments like those are stored into chemistry notebooks. And going to that notebook, we can have a look at the product table of content, as well as the reaction table of content, which both provide you with basic experiment information. Now, if I wanted to go back to my previous experiment and scale it up, I could do so several ways. First, I could duplicate it and then just change the different masses inside the duplicated experiment. Or I could create a template experiment in this folder called My Templates. And to show you how to do that, we are going to go to New Experiment and create a new experiment in the same notebook. As I do so, a new experiment with pre-populated information gets added to the same notebook. So I can add an experiment title. I can associate that experiment with a specific project and I could also add an introduction and conclusion as well. Now going to the reaction section, we are going to maximize the space and then do the same for the ChemDraw document. Here we are going to draw a molecule of TBTA using ChemDraw. And the nice part about it is that all the shortcuts and hotkeys of ChemDraw are usable on the Notebook 2014. Here, for example, I am drawing a fragment of the molecule, quickly duplicate it, quickly flip it, and then just stitch the rest of the molecule together. I select it and then clean up the structure. So that is, of course, one aspect of the chemical drawing inside the notebook. There is also this quick addition toolbar where I can start typing copper and then select from the list of different possibilities. For example, copper sulfate and then click on quick add. But I could also use this little define button to define chemical names as I have done here for TCPHCl. But there are other ways also to add reagents to a reaction, for example, by going to the Add button and selecting from which folder or database the reagent is going to be added. And if I insert a reagent from my inventory, I will be able to update its remaining amounts directly from the notebook by going to the Inventory button and then clicking on Update Container Amounts. Now moving on with the construction of our template, we can add a predefined solvent, for example, by double clicking and then selecting water. We can define volumes, temperature, as well as reaction times. And then for the text part, we can take advantage of the powerful auto text feature by double clicking on the phrase complete protocol, 
which is going to insert a self-defined experimental procedure. And you can already see that some of the dynamic fields in purple I already populated with the solvent and the reaction conditions. From there, what I can simply do is go to the experiment, copy it, and then paste it into the My Templates folder. As I do so, I can then give it a specific name, such as, for example, click Reaction Template. And we can double check, of course, that the experiment is as we defined it. From there, the only thing that I have to do is to go to a chemistry notebook, and I will have the possibility to insert a click reaction template as a new experiment in that notebook. Of course, once you have many experiments in the notebook, you can readily search them. And we are going to do a reaction query with a substructure search. So maximizing the ChemDraw document, we are looking for products that have the following amino acid-like structure, and we can use chemical generic labels Q for any heteroatom except hydrogen, and then A for any atom except hydrogen. We can refine the query by adding specific reaction conditions, such as reaction time, product yield, and containing anywhere in the document the words partitioned and ethyl acetate. After hitting search, I get a search hit list, and I can verify that I'm indeed finding some of my experiments, as well as some of the experiments of my colleague. And if I click on that link, I can have a look at his reaction, the experimental procedure, as well as, for example, a proton NMR PDF. Lastly, the notebook possesses reporting capabilities that allow you to compile together selected experiments. For example, here in the report generator, there are already four experiments, and I'm just going to drag and drop a fifth one into it, then click on Create Report and that will compile these five experiments together into one document. In this example, it was only a few experiments, but you could also do the same at the notebook level and just print a report out of an entire notebook and get, in this case, a larger document, which you can readily export to different file formats for easier sharing.